Hi everyone, today I'm extremely happy to get you acquainted with Matthew Redebay. Uh, he's a French freelance journalist and photographer. Uh, Matthew has been living in Ukraine for a year now, but he had also come a visit for a couple of times. So Matthew, when did you first visit Ukraine and what your first impression was like? I was then in 1996 and it was in kind of a school. And I couldn't make first impression because it's developed it a lot in 20 years so I came back for the second time like five years ago and first impression was about the cliche we have in France on Eastern Europe. I was making studies on Eastern Europe and when I saw the difference between what we see we, we always we still have this image in France about um, Sovietic times and my first impression was that we can find here a lot of several several lifestyle. Mm, how could you describe Ukrainians in general? Uh, which feature is their special one? You can see that people are just caring about each other, not too much, but there is not this kind of free violence as we can find in Europe. So I would say friendly first, open in a way, and strong compared to the situation. It comes as no surprise that France has played an important role as a, a high culture center since 17th century. Uh, so what are the main differences between French and Ukrainian culture? In France, our culture is more kind of intelligent culture uh, for high educated people, kind of elite culture. Here it seems that you still have roots with the past and you still keep them and you still want to have this common culture for whole nation or whole group, which is interesting for me. As far as I'm concerned, you've been covering the war in Donbass since the late 2013. Uh, and uh, in your point of view, why did Russia invade Ukraine and occupy Crimea? It's not linked to Ukraine at all. It's linked to geopolitical fights with US and European Union and to internal politics. It's Putin is trying and he succeed uh, to recover this kind of proneness, pride to be, to be Russian. But for this, he needs to show to his own people that he's strong. And to be strong, you need to invade, because it's a Russian way to show it's to occupy land and to get land. So Ukraine, after Maidan, was the perfect territory to do it, to show his strength, just to help his own population to follow him. This is what he's doing now in, in Syria, too. He shows that he's strong and that people can believe in him. Uh, your photo project, ATO Zone, depicts the day-to-day -day life of the Ukrainian soldiers in Shrokine, Marienka, Chermolik and Popasne. Uh, what are the strongest memories of yours when it comes to the war in Donbass? It was to see smiles and old babushka <laughs> in front line. I remember it was, it was not in the cities, it was a little bit further, but I just went for one day, so I didn't touch it. It was close, it was in the Donsk Oblast. We were stopped, I was covering an uh, NGO mission and were stopped by, by a, a bunch of lady, all ladies, that was living really under kilometer zero. And they invited us to, to take tea, coffee, because they wanted to talk about some projects, uh, because they couldn't sell the products uh, because of the military restrictions. And we spent two hours, and in these two hours with them I took some pictures, smiling pictures, there is Babushka, like covering conflict, it's always about war and explosion and shelling. But when you just focus on humans, you see that humans are the same and humans remain humanity in war. So you can see them smiling even when they're shedding. This is the brightest thing that can happen.